Chitof Headlings here for an oddly technical video. Let's rip open a Rectalux Hardcore DNA. Uh, the original wisdom for this process was imparted to me by Mr. Ian Edward Ware, and you can find a link to his work and his website down below. You should definitely check out his content, as well as a link to the written version of this tutorial. So check it out. Why am I taking a Hardcore DNA apart? Earlier this year, my fellow Vancouverite, Victor Prokopowicz, uh, came to me because he was having trouble with the distance between the front of his Koa 175 and the back of the Hardcore DNA. It was just a little too big to fit inside the back of the Hardcore DNA, so he wanted to mill the back of it a little wider, but he wasn't insane to do it with the glass, of course, as well as he wasn't comfortable taking it apart by himself. So we made a deal. I would do all of the taking apart section of the process, he would get the back of it done and I would get to use his gear for a few videos. So here we are. Taking your hardcore DNA apart is also good to fix stuck focus issues, uh, re-grease, remove excessive grease and clean in between the glass elements. This was a more, much more challenging process than I originally expected, so be careful. But everyone and everything made out all right. And you'll be able to see the Koa video pretty soon too. So hit subscribe now and be done with it. As an easy warm up step, let's get all the clamping screws out. This will set up the mood for everything to come and it's an easy enough step that no one can mess up. Now with gloves and lens wrench, I'll remove the locking ring from the rear glass. After that, carefully drop it onto your hands and place it in a safe area. Move to the front and remove the locking ring. These steps make me extra nervous because I can't have the lens wrench slip and hit the glass. After removing the ring, turn the lens so the glass goes safely on your hand. Put it aside too. Remove the three small screws around the focus ring and now it kind of spins freely. So I went to minimum focus and then pulled off the focus ring. Naked helicoid now, lots of grease. The next step is to take out the screws that lock the cam sheaves. There's three of them. After that's done, move to the drag ring that sits at the bottom of the main body. After that is removed, only the sheaves hold the focus mechanism to the main body of the Rectalux. This is me just being stupid and trying to take out the sheaves from the wrong side. They're held by pressure and you just need to push them from inside so they pop out. I tried to wedge them out and wasted a ton of time in that process. As soon as they get a little loose, the ring with the Rectalux engravings comes out. Put that aside. After that, I realized my mistakes and just used tweezers to push them out from inside and then pull the rest from the outside. They're two tiny things for my big fingers. That releases the helicoid and you can say you're done with the first part of the process. We're gonna mill out the area with the 75 mil threads. And this is what we got. A few millimeters wider and good enough for the Koa. So let's begin reassembling. We got the grease that John Barlow recommended, Mobile 28, which is an aircraft grade grease. I used Q-tips to spread good amounts of it as evenly as I could over the helicoid. Also, I'm doing this without gloves and it really sucked. The best way to clean out the grease is lighter fluid and that messes up your skin. Don't be like me. After you have a good layer on the helicoid and the base piece, slide the helicoid in place and lock it using the big ring that goes on the base. Oh, before you do that, add some grease to the bottom of this ring too. From my understanding, this ring controls the drag of the lens. If you want focus to be stiffer, tighten more here. If you want it to be more loose, don't push this too far but always keep it below the lip of the main body. Check for grease spill and clean it. We're stuffing this baby with grease and there's red stuff going everywhere. Rotate the helicoid so the bottom of the cam curve aligns with the slots in the main body. Now slide in the piece with the Rectalux name. The name should be aligned with the white marking in the main body and align the holes in it with the guides inside the main body as well. The cam sheaves have to go through all of these places to lock everything in place. Once you have everything where it should be, push in the little pins one at a time. 
Make sure all parts are flush and then put back the screws inside the cam sheaves. Do not over tighten. Go just enough so they don't protrude from the surface of the helicoid. Slap some more grease on the outside of the helicoid and then slide over the focus ring. Align with infinity and insert the three tiny screws. Make sure they don't go too deep, like half a millimeter is as far as you should go. Just enough to lock it into place. John recommends using thread lock on these little guys and the drag ring inside of the lens. And I did not do that. I'm traumatized by stripping screws, so thread lock is a no-no for me. Anyway, after you fit the focus ring and lock it, give it a whirl to make sure everything moves accordingly. Go to the minimum focus mark and let's put back the rear glass. Once the front glass is locked into place, do some repeated full focus turns to spread out the grease better. Some of it's gonna come out on the ring with the Rectilux written on it, so you might wanna clean that off. Our last step is the reverse of our first, putting back in place the clamp screws. That concludes the process of putting everything back together. So now this Rectilux can fit bigger lenses. Uh, just like the Koa 175 or how I used it in the Dialyscope video a few weeks ago. If you're gonna attempt this, please be super careful. Use the proper tools, wear gloves, take notes. I would highly recommend you film everything so you can backtrack and see what goes where and don't be like, now where does this little part go? Uh, it's not fun. Like the video if you enjoyed this hardcore lens porn. And please leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I'm trying to grow this to be a good and solid resource for beginners as well as advanced shooters. So there's this one place where you can find everything anamorphic. Help me out with that. I'm Chitu Fahadangs and I'll see you soon.